The tech behind self-driving cars and unmanned drones isn't just helping us get around. It's also teaching us more about big weather events because there's still a lot we just don't know about hurricanes. Fundamentally, we're still asking simple questions about how hurricanes form, how hurricanes intensify, how they rapidly intensify, which are these events where the storm will increase its strength very quickly over a 24-hour period. We're about an hour south of Miami on Virginia Key, and here at the headquarters of NOAA's Hurricane Research Division, scientists like John Zawislak are coming up with new questions to better understand major storms. This is where they build the tools to answer them. So our research is really around not only understanding the processes, but driving the model development so that we're looking at potential storm impacts more days in advance, which will help the National Hurricane Center, which will help the Central Pacific Hurricane Center be able to get those watches and warnings out sooner, get the advisories out sooner. What we don't know can hurt us and potentially lead to billions of dollars in property damage and lives lost. So what are the big questions about these storms that keep scientists up at night. So our priority this season is to look at a hurricane formation. How do they form? We really not have had a lot of focus in the aircraft uh, observations on hurricane formation. It's a challenging to get the airplane into those kinds of situations because you have to be able to forecast the hurricane's formation and that's a challenge in and upon itself. So we're focused on getting the airplane out earlier into storms. So not only the formation of the storm, but into a tropical depression, a tropical storm. They're not just collecting the data. They're working to learn what data matters and why. That's where Lisa Bucci comes in. So this is a drop zone. It's released from the bottom of a plane, a plane. and when it's deployed, um, first this chute comes out, and inside we have a lot of instruments. So there are instruments to study uh, the wind, the temperature, the moisture, and all of that information is transmitted back to the plane where we make sure that it's okay, we quality control it, and then we send it out to the forecasters and the modelers so that they can have a picture of what's happening currently in the storm. Right now, Lisa and her team are trying to paint a better three-dimensional picture of storms. Much of what we can see of a storm is radar picture, and that only shows us where it's raining. But that's not where the storm stops. The HRD is working to deploy LIDAR, that's the same tech used by driverless cars, to detect all of the particles and paint a real 3D picture of storm dynamics. There's actually quite a bit of area that it isn't raining in a hurricane. Everyone kind of imagined it as this like wall of right uh, thunderstorms, but like there's a lot of open air in there too. <laughs> and the rain gaps, those are the areas that don't show up on... On the radar. Yeah, yeah, so it's harder to understand those areas. Right, so before the LiDAR, we would drop these to to measure them. But now that we do have the LiDAR on one of the planes, um, we're able to get that information in those areas that we couldn't previously observe. The hope is to figure out how a hurricane gathers energy from the ocean, which is what literally fuels a storm. So the ocean plays a big role. That We know that the ocean drives hurricanes, but the atmosphere also has a big role in terms of driving these intensification processes. Vertical wind shear is one factor, so the change of wind speed and direction with height. So we're looking for these sort of external factors as well, in addition to the ocean component that drives these rapid intensifications. There is a lot we don't know. And you know, hurricanes, they're pretty rare phenomena. Like we only get to measure maybe five to eight a year. You're slowly building your knowledge base every year, but it's just baby steps each year. And I think it'll be a few more decades before we're really in a solid place because we still have a lot of questions. <laughs>